good to see you again, um, Sammy. What's been what's been happening for you lately? We've been all go. It's um, the cool thing with rugby. It, it was all on on pause there for a while. Now it's just all go. We've had uh, four games and. Uh, we'll just come off our bike. With farming at the moment, real busy time. Yeah, it is a busy time, isn't it? It's uh, the, probably the most challenging too, um, depending on obviously uh, your farming system you're in. But um, most people are either carving at the moment or about to go into carve. Um, same with lambing. And normally this is the, the harshest part of the, the weather too. What's your memories of how you and the family coped, you know, just during those real busy times? To- Got a couple of memories that, um, definitely stick. Dad was always right. Come on, let's go out on the farm, help out where you can. And um, we found that challenging, but we also knew that we had to help out where we could because the pressure that was on mum, and dad, and the, and the staff having a, a larger dairy farm. The challenges that are involved are, are massive, and, and when you're carving big numbers in a small amount of days, you could see that the pressure was on. And um, to dad's credit, he he really drove the enjoyment side of it and that's probably why um, a couple of sons are in farming. What have you learned around the importance of nutrition and eating well, just making sure that you've got the fuel in your tank? What we learned um, through rugby and all through um, through farming is you have to look after what you put in your body, eating good food, um, having a lot of food, um, small and often is the, the good way to do it, which keeps your energy level up. Um, and also Something as simple as just taking a water bottle with you, even if you're only going to be out for half an hour. As we know, this time of the year, half an hour can turn into three or four hours pretty quickly. So having a little bit of water there, even though it's cold, um, definitely keeps you in a good space. What have you learned about these mini breaks or opportunities to just have a little time out and uh, rest and recovery during the day? Dad used to always have a little quick power nap. And at the time I thought, Oh, that's a bit weird. And sometimes it'd be a 30 second, just close your eyes, just take a little break and go because you're busy. Some days you wouldn't have time for that. But um, Dad always tried to make sure that he had the ability to just take a bit of time out, even if it's just 30 seconds, stop, rethink about what needs to be done. So a good, good plan for the, the afternoon. And then when it was like, right, let's go, we're all up into it. And uh, you know, attacking the rest of the day. Um, there is a good story that I remember one day walking in from the, the bathroom or whatever I was doing and the cat was asleep on his on his stomach and the cat's going up and down as he was breathing and <laughs> Dad uh, realised pretty quickly and then we were back into some hard yak after that. In terms of your longer sleep during the night, what sort of things have you learned about the importance of getting quality sleep, even when you're real busy? Um, I know for myself, if I've got things in my head, I've just got to write them down so then I can go, right, I'll deal with that tomorrow. One thing that definitely has helped me is leaving my phone and keeping that away from me just that half an hour before bedtime or all that hour. It, it is good to actually just put that to the side, make sure you've got an alarm clock re- ready to go so when you, it is time to get up, you're up and at them rather than, you know, you kind of spend that half an hour just looking at social media or reading something on your phone that's when I find for myself, when I get rid of my phone early in the night, it definitely does help um, for the quality of sleep I have. You know, just how, how have you sort of juggled um, when you've got, you know, a list as long as your arm of things to get through? How, have you, how do you go about, you know, just juggling that? First thing is working out what is a priority and is there something that you can do that's going to eliminate the other two or three things? Um, using rugby terms, um, if you're, your scrum's not going very well and then your back attack's not going very well. I know that's pretty simple, but you sort your scrum out nine times out of ten, it sorts your back attack out. So um, mm. what is the priority and, and where does it sit on the list? Or is it a, a nice to do but not a, a must do now? Um, because as we all know, whether you have a, a small lifestyle block or a, you know 25,000 acres, there's always something to be done, um, but there's not enough time in the day. So you've got to work out what... The, the key is and what the priority is and what you can you live with and then kind of work back from there.